It seems to me that AI technology has achieved nothing but spread fear among the software developer community as a tool that will replace software developers and take their jobs. So in this video, I hope to explain to you why I think that won't happen, uh, which is AI won't be replacing you and won't be taking your jobs. And the number one reason is accountability. So accountability is the number one reason I think software developers won't get replaced by AI, whether it is Devin or any other chatbot model that may get released in the future. The reason I say this is because companies make us go through lots and lots of rounds of interviews, whether it's a coding round, whether it's a logical reasoning and aptitude round, whether it's an HR round uh, or any other round that you can think of, because they absolutely want to make sure that they are hiring the correct person because there's a lot on the line and the company has a lot to lose for that person to take on the role. Now, as software developers, when we show up to the office every day and we write code and we ship it to production servers, there is a lot on the line on our part as well, because if the company ends up losing money because of the faulty code that we wrote and sent it to production, we can end up losing our job. The management can put us on the chopping block straight away. And this is why software developers like us humans, we have a sense of urgency or the sense of this thing has to work correctly. I better make sure that it is tested properly because there is a sense of real threat of us losing our jobs. With AI, I don't think there is a sense of accountability on their part. They could just say to us that you should have queried the model better. We can't really build up a case on, I told you this query, you gave me this system back. I sent it to production and um, we lost a lot of money. There is nothing really you can say to the AI company that gave you the chatbot to work with. Because anything that you say to them, you may hear back that you should have just queried the model a little better Then you, sh you would have gotten the thing that you were looking for. So now I just wanted to discuss AI in general and I wanted to ask some questions to the viewer because it has been over a year since ChatGPT got released and when it initially got released, people already started saying that ChatGPT is the thing that will replace software engineers and I don't think that happened. The reason I say this is because so many layoffs have happened in the last six months uh, where so many companies fired so many hundreds and thousands of people and yet no company said that uh, we have AI chatbots which is why we fired all the extra employees. They all said that uh, they overhired and they needed to downsize just a little. So the number one question that I have for AI models is how do I decide which one to buy? And I mean this, if five AI companies came to you with their AI products and asked you to buy theirs and not the other ones, what will be the deciding factor for you to decide which one to buy and which ones to not buy? Because usually in the real world, when we get placed with choices of for products belonging in the same category, there is some sort of distinction between them that, okay, if I wanted to buy a car, then why would I buy an SUV and not a sports car? Or why would I buy a sedan car and not a Formula One racing car? Because the differences can be, you know, obvious. And there is there can be people who can explain us the differences that why buy this and not that. Now with AI models, there is no such distinction factor, is it? All of them just say that, oh, we have this algorithm working, which means nothing for the customer because customers don't care about the algorithm. So then they say that the price is a distinction factor. And if you have watched Shark Tank, you must know that you shouldn't play the price game uh, when you are selling a product ever. And uh, the capabilities of AI is always marketed as something that can never go wrong. It will always be functional. It can answer any question you throw at it. And this is my main concern of when five companies come to me and ask me to buy their AI product, how do I distinguish between them, all five of them? So the second question that I have is are we even ready for AI? Now, if you are aware of some incidents happening uh, in the recent past, then you must know that there is this ALN company that hired an AI chatbot to handle its customer side of operations. And the AI chatbot decided to implement and uh, create a refund policy on its own and offered it to the customer, which resulted in a lawsuit and the company had to pay the customer out. And the question that arises in my mind is, is AI getting told what to do and what is the line that it cannot cross? So anyway, the next question that I have is, are we even ready to trust AI? So let's assume that there is a chatbot that I'm using and I have a PDF that is highly confidential to me and I upload it to the chatbot and asked it to proofread it. 
and see if any grammatical mistakes are there. Now, how do I know that that chatbot is not keeping the information to itself after it tells me the result? And how do I know that that information is not getting dif displayed to someone else who queried the chatbot uh, the exact way that it had to to get that information uh, that I uploaded? So there's a lot of trust uh, issues with AI. As a consumer, how do I trust an AI is never getting talked about uh, when we talk about AI. So the next question that I have is how long does it take for the AI chatbot to catch up to the latest trends and be good enough to answer questions that common people ask it? And let's take an example. So let's say that in three weeks time, there is a new JavaScript framework that gets dropped on us. How long would it take for the AI chatbot to catch up to that uh, new framework, download and consume all the data, and then be knowledgeable enough to answer questions uh, to common people like us? That is a factor that does not get talked about. And as a customer of that AI chatbot, I would hope that my chatbot is keeping itself up with latest trends. And uh, yeah, that is something that does not get talked about. So the next question that I would ask is, are chatbots really better than software engineers? So, and I would uh, give some examples of my own to help give you context. So last year in January 2023, when ChatGPT first released, I signed up. And uh, the first question that I asked the chatbot was write a program to tell me if a given input number is a prime number or not. And it gave me the usual solution. It started from uh, looping from two to n, and then it kept dividing and checking for remainder zero. And that's how it decided. Now the instant problem that I saw there was the chatbot didn't have to go from two to n. It could have stopped at n divided by two. And that was the exact moment I was disappointed with AI. I knew that this is like just a junior. Uh, how we deal with juniors in the workplace, they join and they post really uh, basic solutions. And then as seniors, we have to take it and optimize it to, you know, uh, make it efficient or whatever. And some months uh, went by, I went back to the chatbot and asked the same question and then it got it right. So there is a sense of AI chatbots learning every day. And the question only that I have to ask is, is it really better than software engineers? Okay. So the next thing that I want to discuss is more of a concern rather than a question. And that is, how do I know that OpenAI is not consuming the entire knowledge of GitHub and it's not reading the code that I am pushing uh, on my company's behalf or my client's behalf? So let's say that my client has hired me to do some task and they have made me sign an NDA of uh, me not sharing the work with anyone else other than the client. And as usual, I write my code, I commit it, and I push it to GitHub, which is owned by Microsoft. And OpenAI, also owned by Microsoft. And ChatGPT, also owned by OpenAI, again, owner, Microsoft. So how do I know that Microsoft isn't taking that GitHub data, I mean, GitHub code repositories, and feeding it to ChatGPT to train it against my consent? This is really a privacy concern really that we as software developers may need to move to self-hosting. So, you know, we have some shot of protecting our code from getting, you know, uh, consumed by chatbots and getting displayed to other software engineers, breaking the NDA. So there have been some scenarios where uh, GitHub Copilot shows to do items written by other software developers um, out of nowhere. And if you notice my coding writing style, what if tomorrow you query chat GPT and it shows you exactly the way I write code? Then is it a, a obvious sign that chatbots really took my code and started sharing it with the world without my consent? So this is more of a concern that doesn't get talked about when it comes to, you know, chat GPT or open AI, uh, getting the data to, you know, train their AI models. So the next question that I wanted to ask is, is it really worth it to replace your entire software development team with AI chatbots? And if you think about it from a management perspective, you would come to the conclusion in five minutes that management is never going to make that decision to completely replace their software development team with AI chatbots. The reason I say that is because management will look at it in this way. Like, is it not better to take the AI chatbot and introduce it to their software development team's workflow so their boilerplate tasks or their daily repetitive tasks uh, get easier to handle rather than completely getting rid of them and replacing them with prompt engineers who may not know how to code and it's not really saving money is it 
because management would rather keep their software developers that they have worked with for years or months or even sometimes decades rather than getting prompt engineers and risk losing everything uh, for the company. So in conclusion, from a management perspective, it's not worth it to replace your entire software development team with AI chatbots. So the next point that I want to discuss about AI is the influencer side of it. And I actually get headaches uh, with so many videos getting recommended to me in my YouTube feed about Devin AI replacing software developers or chat GPT replacing software developers or any other AI model that will do the same to software developers. And honestly, it makes my head hurt about the arguments that I hear from these YouTubers. And the number one argument I hear is that an AI can write code and can debug and uh, produce an application. So why would we need real software developers? Right. So that is the same thing as saying that we don't need real actors because we can animate movies. That is the same thing as saying that why would you buy a tractor when you can buy a sports car? Even if Devin AI can produce code and can write apps doesn't mean that you don't need software developers anymore. So if you are a company founder or a CEO, then there is a high chance that you don't have the technological knowledge of knowing the ins and outs of systems. At that point, you do need a person to look over the systems running when you ship it to production and it hits the market with real consumers. Because, we cons because the consumers don't care about the technology of the application, whether it was written by a human software engineer or whether it was written by an AI software engineer. They want the value out of the business and any uh, business guy or any company founders, they are not going to take the risk because they want through and thorough knowledge of their systems and they want to make sure that correct people are placed in correct places so their business can thrive. The next point that I want to discuss about AI technology is the fear mongering that is going on on YouTube, social media or just media in general. And I have mixed opinions on this. On one side, I do think that it's bad that YouTubers are creating videos and scaring people into not learning software engineering anymore. There's this video of the NVIDIA CEO saying that uh, we should stop learning programming. And so many YouTubers jumped on that video and started saying that AI is going to completely take over software developers and we won't need them anymore just because Devin AI got released. And on the other side, I do think this fear is a little bit necessary. So it drives out people who are not passionate about writing software. So I, as a software developer, I can tell you that I absolutely love writing software. Why else would I do it uh, for seven or eight years straight if I didn't like it in the first place? I think it's one of the most uh, flexible jobs to exist in the modern society where I can stay in home and I can work and make my living just like this. So if we want to have a shot at writing good software and getting good quality products out in the market, we do need this industry to be filled with people who like writing software and not just chasing money. It's because of these day in the life videos where YouTubers show their salaries, uh, $300,000 a year, uh, sitting in their fancy offices, just working one hour a day. It's because of these reasons, uh, software engineering industry, it got so many software developers who are chasing the money and not the passion. So it's a little mixed opinion in between uh, the fear mongering and, you know, people getting scared away from learning to how to code. Yeah. So pretty much these are all the points that I had in mind about AI and uh, do subscribe to my channel if you like this video and that's about it see you